The big news, Texans just made a trade, and it involves no human beings. It involves draft picks, and it's with the Minnesota Vikings. And the Texans, as a result of this trade, no longer have a first-round pick. Weigh in, 713-572-4610, how you feel. The general feeling, it's pretty split. I thought it would be, and I'll give you the details in a second, I thought it would be more negative because now, you know, first-round picks are sexy. There's a huge raise in day two. It's far lesser ratings. But um, but I think there there is a, a decent amount of, okay, well, I, you know, I trust Nick and what he's doing here. There are people that are, it seems like listeners, pretty plugged into this draft class that don't feel great. That 23 is kind of a no-man's land. Here's the details of the trade. And then, Seth, I want to get your gut reaction when we talked about this late in the last segment, what you think of this. Um, in this trade, Minnesota gets the Texans' first-round pick, and they get a seventh-round pick. In exchange, the Texans get Minnesota's second round pick, which is 42nd overall. So the Texans are moving down 19 spots, and they're getting pick number 188, which is probably in the fifth or sixth round somewhere. The key thing the Texans are getting back here is a second round pick, Minnesota's second round pick in 2025. And we should note here, I think there's a better chance than not that Minnesota's not a very good football team this year. Yeah. In a division with Green Bay and Detroit, um, and and probably either a rookie or Sam Darnold at quarterback. So this second round pick has a chance to be very very good. That's right. The point, yeah, and is if Minnesota's looking to trade up. I mean, are they going to try to trade up for JJ McCarthy? Do they, do, they, do they think that maybe somehow the Patriots are going to trade out so they'll have a shot at either Jaden Daniels or Drake May? Um, whatever the case might be, I'm, I'm skeptical that they'll get a quarterback that they really, really like. Um, but we'll see. It, it might end up being the Sam Darnold show. I, I think my first thought initially, immediately, was, okay, well, how's Nick going to get back up into the first round? Mm-hmm. I, I wonder if he feels like maybe the strength of this is the back end of the first round. Yeah. So he wants to have this flexibility now of, okay, we've, we, we like a lot of guys that are probably going to be available end of the first round, top of the second round. And... If we need to move up or if I want to move up, we've got these two picks in the second round. We've got two picks in the second round next year. We'll be able to figure out a way to do it. So it gives them the flexibility to do that. I would give it a, I would still give it a 50-50 shot that the Texans will end up with a first-round pick. You do? You think yeah, he can yeah. move back? I, mean, I, I just think it might not be until draft, like the day before the draft or draft until night. Until they see how the board falls. It may, yeah, not be yeah. until, it may not be until right before the pick like it was with Will Anderson last year. Yeah. Um, Which will make for an interesting draft party if it's during the actual draft itself. It'll be really super interesting. So if we do my thing here where immediately I have four thoughts on something that happens with the Texans, like I did with the Schultz signing and Kaimi and some other things, honestly the first thing that popped into my head of the four thoughts on this is, yeah, what happens with the draft party this year? Uh, The draft party has been lit the last couple years because the Texans have had two first-round picks. So it was already going to be tamped back a little bit from the – you know, 2022 when they had pick three and pick 13. And then last year, I mean, they're never going to top last year where you pick a quarterback at two and then you move up and get Will Anderson at three. But it was going to be kind of fun to have a good team and just sit back and see what everybody else is doing to try to, you know, kind of hang with the Texans. Texans are one of the better teams in the league now. And now they're out of the first round. I think So I think that is a thought that pops into my head. I guess if I got very specific, I mean, your point about Nick probably not picking at 42, he was was already just about not picking at 23. He's now fulfilled that prophecy, and, and he's picking at 42. But let's pretend for a second that he's trading back to 42 with not really a mind of moving up. Like, okay, this may be where we pick at 42, because it may be hard to move back up. If we right. pick at 42, I think the two biggest things the Texans were going to be looking at at 23, especially yeah. the way the offseason has unfolded, would be yeah. defensive tackle or one of these yeah. wide receivers. And I feel like... Of the defensive tackles they like, they feel like there's a pretty good chance that they would have to move up to get one. I feel like with the receivers, they feel like they can get the same guy at 42 they get at 23. You know, the one thing that makes perfect sense here, the first thing I thought of immediately when I started thinking about defensive tackles was, okay, Johnny Newton is like more and more being mocked to the Texans at 23, or was being mocked. So Johnny Newton, the defensive tackle out of Illinois, was being mocked. And I love Johnny Newton. I think the the way this guy moves and plays and understands football, I like him a lot. It's funny, I go down to, uh, on Mock Draft Database, they kind of take a compilation of the where players are generally going into which team. 
pick 42, which is now the Texans pick, but pick 42, Braden Fisk, defensive tackle out of Florida there State. There you and, go. like, because that was the first guy I thought of is, like, man, I, got, I wonder if a guy like Braden Fisk and with his upside and everything else um, is, is a guy that really intrigues Nick. And he thinks that there's a few guys like that right around there. And then certainly there will be guys at wide receiver. You get down into that second round, and I think there's a few defensive linemen. I mean, to like Andre Sweat would be a surprise to me because of his size. Like, in a, but boy, I think I think D'Amico looks at Devondre Sweat and thinks, yeah, I mean, he can be in there on third down and push the pocket. But my God, what a presence and how much better does he make us? So, like, I think there's multiple defensive tackles in the second round that are probably super intriguing to the Texans. Yeah, and as well as wide receivers. So it might just be as simple as that. That this is a lot of bang for the buck in in, in a round of the uh, in an area of the draft that he feels good about. I think if you're somebody who thinks that the Texans should be drafting wide receiver um, with their first pick, that I think this move should excite you. I think this makes it a more likely chance that they're taking a wide receiver with one of those two picks because now they're moving back into a spot in the draft where I think there's going to be a bunch of receivers that you could pay less for and they're probably just as good a chance they're going to pan out as you would have taking Brian Thomas at 23 out of LSU. You know, yeah. there's just so many guys. Uh, like, like, like if you want a Xavier Worthy, you know, yeah. um, uh, like a, a, a Xavier McConkey. Leggett. You want any Xavier at all for yeah. the most part. Oh, uh, dude. A, like, Keon this, Coleman. This, there's like a lot of the guys projected to go in the second round right now are guys that you're going to get excited about. Yeah. Boy, does this increase the chances we get Xavier Leggett. Hey, Ben, can you grab <laughs> the audio of Xavier Leggett from uh, South, Car South Carolina? Ben's busy in there. He's he's putting the podcast up. I would uh, I'd go for a Roman Wilson just if only Michigan? to hear CJ yeah. Stroud and Roman Wilson talk smack about oh uh, about Ohio State he Michigan. And, he and Nico ganging up. Yeah, on, Nico on, and Roman Wilson together ganging yeah. up on CJ Stroud. We got the legette, Ben. We uh, um, Ben's getting it. Um, okay, here's how about another hypothetical? Okay, this actually I'm going to give him credit. This is a text from our boss. All right. Um, how about a T. Higgins theory? Okay. okay. He's, a boss texts me right after the trade. Said, T. Higgins trade coming? And I said, ooh, I'm intrigued. Explain. Um, and then he said, uh, backwards logic maybe, but if your value on Higgins was something like a, a mid-second plus some fluff, you move back to the middle of the second round and you get a second in return for doing that next year, and then you go ahead and make the Higgins trade. Now you're not having to trade pick 23 to go get Higgins. And if Cincinnati is amenable to that, you trade T. Higgins for a second instead of just duking him a first. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go sign Higgins. I don't think that's the case. I don't think, the I don't think Nick Casario is I – don't, I don't know that he philosophically would do this, period. Um, but I certainly don't think he thinks he needs to do it at wide receiver with C.J. Stroud, which is give up draft capital for the right to overpay a guy. Right, for the right to give him a new contract, like at a position where you feel pretty good about right now and we're in the draft. Like, why trade for T. Higgins right now when there are so many promising wide receivers in the draft? Yep. And, like, neither of them – like, T. Higgins is not a, a guarantee. It's a lot closer to a guarantee than a draft pick, obviously. Um, but there, that comes with a price tag. It just doesn't – it doesn't make a lot of sense just from – where you allocate your resources that, that you would be trading for a wide receiver right now and paying him when there's so many guys to get excited about in the draft. Okay, so we got excited about Xavier Leggett from South Dakota because his voice is going viral right now. Um, Damian Pierce, I think, is definitely the most country Houston Texan. Um, take a listen to Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina, who right now on the consensus big board on the mock draft database is 48th. So it would be a little bit of an overdraft to take this guy at 23. But maybe Nick Casario was listening to us play this audio earlier, Seth. Yeah. And he decided, you know what? I like this guy. I think we move back into the early part of the second round and pick up a second because we need this guy in our locker room. Man, um, I'll be right down the road. It'll be a little easier for my family to come watch me play. So that'll be great. That's just them telling me down that they want me on their team. Man, I'm um, a lot of coaches came and hollered at me before and after this process here, man. Um, a lot of them, man, they, they um, say they got a buzz in their facility for me, man, and I'm just ready to see where I'm going to land. He's one of those guys I don't even care what he's talking about. What are we going to do? What about, uh, what about after they draft him and they ask what he did with his first, um, his first big 
paycheck and he says he bought a tobacco farm. <laughs> I feel like we're going to be a little bit of a we're going to be a little bit quandary here, <laughs> you know, morally that like he's he's, he's aligned t- with big cancer. He's big tobacco. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more Xavier Leggett, because this is my favorite one. He gets asked by a reporter. Um, he gets he get, who cares what he gets asked? It's Xavier Leggett. A reporter asks him a question. Whether you're taking a pitch or catching a short pass or catching a deep ball, what would you say are the best parts of your game that help you get into the end zone so often? Oh uh, man, I say the deep ball, man. But uh, I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get. I take him at forty-two, Nick. If you're listening, you can't have when you've got guys like that are super country like that. The best thing about them is how trusting they are. Yeah. Um, which is, means you got to watch out for them too. Like they're, you know, they're very, very susceptible to scams sometimes. But when they come from deep, deep country, right. they, they grew up in an area where like you could take people at their word because you're going to have to, they're like one of the 12 people that you would see in a given year. Yep. So people got to, you know, they got to live up to their word. They got to not screw each other over and all that. So I feel like it's, it's good for team culture to have guys that are just inherently all in and like they, they trust the coach, all that stuff stuff they've never they haven't been burned nearly as many times as right. people would grow up in the city if we believe yeah. that you have to have one super duper country person in your locker room making this trade moving back putting yourself in position to get xavier leggett does free you up to trade damian pierce because now yeah. leggett fills the country role in the locker room i i tell you what man i'm surprised there there are a lot of people on the text page that are that are down with this trade. It's a good move, in my opinion. 23 is kind of a dead man zone, and we don't necessarily have a ton of capital to make a move up to go get a specific guy. Oh, that's true. My Brock Bowers dream is over. That's, right, that's yeah. thought number four. My Brock that's Bowers a, that dream was immediate- has ended. That was the first thing I thought of, honestly, yeah. immediately, was that, oh, like, you you actually do like this Brock Bowers dream. And Love it's, him. Um, yeah, it's over. It's just probably not good. There's... I mean, it could. It would just be a lot more maneuvering. Well, yeah, you're probably yeah. not going to trade directly up to 14 or he, 15 from here. I hate to do He needs to fail a drug test now or something, Brock Bowers. I need something hmm. that gets him down to 42. It's harder to do these days, too. I know. You know, I know. it used to be like, like, okay, like, okay, like, does he have a problem? Or right. did, was he dumb for a little bit? You know, now... Now, if he gets nabbed for a drug test, it's going to be something hardcore, uh, which you, you've got a serious, you've got to rethink what, what you're all about here, Sean. Yeah, it's true. This isn't the 1980s, okay? <laughs> I know. You can't, like, cocaine can't be the most popular performance-enhancing <laughs> drug of the age, all right? Um, uh, just like Nick, no frills day one, action galore day two, better bang for the buck in the second round. Then there's people who don't like this trade. I don't like, I don't think trading out of a first-round pick is smart. There's people saying that. Um, yeah, the the um. Let's see. Can you guys please explain this now? Does it mean we have three second round picks? All they listed on the website is the number. Uh, one of the second round picks is for next year. Yes. So they have two second round picks this year yep. and two second round picks next year. Yeah. Um. I think like like just as, I, I guess. Uh, what was that last comment you had made about not being able to get back up into the first round? And get, um, well, not like, being able to get Brock Bauer. Oh, like if the like if the Texans, yeah, maybe they want to move back in the first round, but it takes two to tango. You may not right. Be it able takes to. two to tango, but it's not like an impossible price or anything. Sure. They just they just established a, a going rate or a going price for that. So I think that especially once the draft starts to play out, mm-hmm. I think it's very very possible that Casario trades up into the first round if he sees somebody he likes. Yeah. Especially because remember. You have that fifth-year option that makes the back end of the first round a little bit more valuable than it used to be, but he might just feel like that's where the, the sweet spot is in the draft this year. And I would, like, even, like, as much as I love Johnny Newton, it's not like he is new age 325-pound athletes. No. He's a little bit more old school in that he's a 300-pounder, he's a 297-pounder, pounder who's very, very athletic. But there's a little bit of projection into knowing whether or not he's going to be strong and powerful enough to make it in the NFL. Yeah. Like, so it's not like anybody taken with a 23rd pick overall. You've got reservations about him. They're not, yeah. like, they're not cut from stone and the absolute prototype. So I, it doesn't hurt me as much to move out of the first round when we're talking about the 23rd pick. The hit rate on guys dips after you get to like 11th or 12th pick. Like that's like yeah. the sure things are up that high in the draft. Um, I, I people, just, are, people are excited about, like I talk about Johnny Newton. People are excited about now the prospect of Tavondre Sweat. Yeah, like, uh, maybe. Like right? Tavondre Sweat, yeah. he's 365 pounds, yeah. but he's an absolute beast. I worry about how much D'Amico likes to practice outside, if it's going to be Tavondre Sweat practicing yeah. outside. Um, we're going to have to have like a, a citywide ban that you're not allowed to add guac to anything he orders. Yep. He's got to watch his weight. And yes. yet, 
Man, with a second round pick, Tavondre Sweat is just the kind of risk I'm into. Like, oh no, he might be too big and manly. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me that. Give me that. That's where the Texans need a system in place with every eatery in Houston where if Tavondre Sweat orders certain things, Jeez. there's yeah. just a gigantic alarm that goes off in the place. Like, all right, I but just I, I got to explain this. For some reason, some people think that, no. It's they traded. There's two first. There's two second round picks. They're getting back. They're getting one, an extra one this year, and an extra one next. Yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They moved back from 23 to 42 I, in this draft. I, there must have been something about the way I said it. At least two people thought that yeah. it was just one second. Round pick. No, they bought 42, and yeah, they get a second round pick next year. There's some shuffling of some day three picks going on as well. But, but that's essentially... As well the as the second round pick this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I mean. They moved back 19. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just phrasing it different than you, I guess. I just, yeah. I know, I know, Sean, but yeah. people aren't getting it. So gotcha. I'm just explaining. Gotcha. They got two, okay. they got two let me second read round the, picks that they didn't let me, have let me, read, let me read the exact trade according to uh, Twitter here. So everybody's on the same page, all right? Um, the, the Vikings are getting pick number 23 and a seventh round pick this year. In return... The Texans are getting pick number 42, pick number 188, and a second-round pick next year. We yeah. can't phrase it any more plainly than that. That's the trade. Don't get upset. I'm just No, I'm no, just no, no, no. I'm, I'm not upset at you. I'm not. No. You're talking down to, like, the poor people that didn't understand it. because We've we never done that before. Well <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, okay, some more reaction to it. What a dumb bleeping trade. Why now? Why not wait until <laughs> draft night and have more leverage? He must be drunk. Um, Okay, why not wait until draft night and have more leverage? I guess because like, it, it, because this is where he thought he should trade right now. Um, I guess like to have more leverage to do what? Like the, the trades come and the opportunities are there as they as they become available. Um, it's hard to trade back up into the first round if you haven't traded back out of the first round. I don't know. He wants to see. I think honestly, probably where he is right now and where the, he thinks the board might be. It's just that he feels like there are a lot of really good options at the top of the second round and at the end of the first round. Yeah. Kind of launch himself up if he needs to or sit and, and take whoever falls there. But, like, he just – Nick moves a lot. He, he does. He trades a lot. He, it's just – to think that this is, like, the final and then this is where you're going to end up drafting on draft night, I would take the field versus that. I would, too. I, yeah. I, I would, too. But I do think you've got to be comfortable with the idea that you might have to pick at 42 – just because it may not fall the way you want it to on draft night, or that might not the trades might not be available to you on draft night. So I think you got to be comfortable picking at 42. Let's pretend that it's 42. Let's do this in the next segment because we've got a lot of people asking this question: Who's there at 42? I think a lot of people have like six names in mind at 23, Seth. So who are the names that are hovering in the mid to late 30s into the low 40s right now on the mock drafts that now might be names that are falling into the Texans part? of the draft that they're in. Again, if you're just tuning in, the Texans trade the 23rd pick plus a seventh rounder to the Minnesota Vikings for their second round pick this year, a day three pick this year, and their second round pick in 2025.